have a confession. I love crappy romantic comedies. Yeah, yeah, it's a cliche. I can't help it. I love them. All those movies have that scene, you know? The girl is at her wit's end. She's been crying her eyes out. Her makeup is running. She looks like a zombie. She's done. Which is when Ryan Gosling knocks on her door to coax her out. Miss. Ah, shit. That sounds nothing like Ryan Gosling. See, this is the problem with my life in a nutshell. It's not romantic, and it's certainly not a comedy. All right, where am I? What happened? Oh, yeah, the hospital. I felt woozy, and then oof, really, really hot, and I guess that I fainted? Ah, well, drop to the restroom floor like a sack of potatoes. No better place for a nap. Are you okay, miss? Oh, shit, the doctor. <sighs> Honestly, not really, no. I'll be all right, though. Um, are you sure? Ah, uh -huh, as if I could be sure of anything. Still, I should probably update my guardian angel. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe there's something I know for sure. If I have to spend one more second lying on this filthy floor, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to vomit. Uh, vomit again, I guess. I'm just a, a little nauseous, is all. I just had a little bit of a moment. A big moment. But it's over now. Uh, sorry, I ducked out. Uh, I'm already feeling much, much better. I can hardly tell her the truth, can I? Most people don't actually want you to be honest with them. Oh, I apologize, Dr. Giagana. I just vomited up my breakfast. I had it all over my chin. It wasn't a good look. It's hardly my fault. I haven't been handling stress very well lately. I guess it depends on what qualifies as lately, hmm. If we could take it to mean anything from yesterday to the day I was born, then I'm not lying. I'll be out in just a second. Those weren't here before. Do you think they have any idea where they are? I'm sure this comes as a shock, but it is crucial that you understand the situation. Your mom had a brain aneurysm. Do you know what that means? Mom. <laughs> Funny. I could never get myself to call her mom. She's always been married to me. As I understand it, it's a weakened artery wall? Correct. And that artery ruptured which caused a hemorrhage. It is a serious situation. We need to prepare for whatever happens next very quickly indeed. I've watched enough Grey's Anatomy to know that this is not good. We? Oui. I don't know anything about medicine. I work in administration. I, it's mostly paperwork. I am not going to tell her that I'm a failed screenwriter. She would never take me seriously. Anything related to medical care will be my team's responsibility. But you are her trusted advocate. I, I'm so sorry, you should her what now? Do, do you not remember? This is the reason we called you. We have your name and your number, which means that you signed the release. I have no idea what she's talking about. And since she's not able to express her will, it falls to you to speak on her behalf. But I presume you discussed that when you went through the process. So you must know that there are a number of options to consider. I don't believe it! She put my name on the form without asking me! She must have forged my signature! It's hardly a surprise. She's always done that kind of stuff. But I'm not making any important decisions. I've had my share of this kind of responsibility, and it didn't turn out well. However, my dear mother doesn't seem to understand. 
After all we've been through, what makes her think that I can make the right decision? I feel trapped, like a fish in a barrel. Ah, oh, come to think of it, I would love that. A 30-second memory, and not a care in the world. Fear me, sharks, for I am the terror of the oceans. Hmm, that reminds me of the nickname I got during uh, swim class in middle school. Sea hag. Haters, all of them. I'm sorry, miss. Miss Fortin. Demange. I... Uh, I went back to my maiden name. I'm sorry. That wasn't in your file. Listen, I understand that this is all very sudden, but we don't have a lot of time. We need to focus. We do indeed. Why do you think I'm here? Let me be clear, miss. I'm not your enemy, I'm just the uncle physician. So we can work together to help your mother, or we can wait 7 hours, 22 minutes and 17 seconds. And then I can go home, and you can pick up the conversation with Dr. Zorzin instead. But I should warn you, Zorzin is an old coot. No, you're right. I'm sorry. Okay. I guess I deserve that one. It's okay. I understand. It's not an easy situation. Our major concern right now is the hemorrhage is spreading. There's the risk of a cerebral vasospasm. That is a complication which could severely affect her brain. Is... is she going to die? We're doing our best to make sure that doesn't happen. But there could be long-term consequences. This sort of event severely impacts the body, and mental functions may also be impaired. I need to know if you and your mother will be able to deal with that sort of complication. No, it can't be! Holy... fucking... shit. I'm not ready for this. What do you mean? To be completely frank, if we're able to pull your mother through this, there's only a small chance she'll be like she was before. Small? How small? Smaller than that. In all probability, she will never be quite the same. Some people would prefer not to keep living under such circumstances, that rather their medical care were geared more around letting go as gracefully as possible. What I need to know is what would your mother want? I don't know how to answer that. Last time she told me she wanted something, it was... To be in MoMA. Excuse me? MoMA? The museum in New York. Miss de Mange, I... Wait, your mother's that Marie de Mange? The artist? Ah, there it is. Works every time. Once people figure out who Marie is, snap! Their whole demeanor changes. They feel like they know her somehow. Of course, they're completely wrong. Oh, she takes them in with her dog and pony show. But there's a world of difference between who she is in public and in private. And if this doctor knew Marie, the real her, she would realize how ridiculous her question is. Yeah, the Marie de Mange. And I'm her assistant, I guess. I handle the business, the management, the press. So that she can be fully dedicated to her art, you see? Anyway, uh, the other day, I, I got a call from Centre Pompidou. They want to do a retrospective on her life and work. Can you imagine? The, the billboards, the crowds, the press, the whole shebang. And I'm like, hell yeah! I hop into my car, I rush over to tell her. I run into the workshop, yelling, and you know what she said? Uh, did you hear from Mama? Ugh. Someone had told her they were considering her self-portrait eight, a canvas from her latest series. A whole exhibit in Paris, on the other hand, she didn't care. So, that's my mother. Most of the time, I don't know. I have no idea what she wants. 
I know what I'm asking isn't easy. I can give you a little time to think. Like that would change anything. I, uh, yeah. I suppose I need to think about it. I'm sorry, I... I gotta go. <sighs> I know what she'd say. That I'm running away again. What did she expect? <laughs> that I'd just show up and what? Decide whether uh, oh, she lives or she dies. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm supposed to make it to the end of the day. <laughs> Let alone. Oh, what? I remember, Diane and I found an injured bird in the backyard. It was tiny. I think it was around the time Marie had set up her new studio in the sunroom. Now that I think of it, that was also my first experience with death. In fact, I also had a really weird dream that night. Something about that day always seemed off. I never figured out why. And why am I thinking about this now? I saw a big shadow moving down the hallway that night. I imagined a monster bird was visiting us. For a long time, I thought it was just a strange dream. Back then, Marie wasn't very well known, but she was hard-working. She had just started a series on birds, actually. They were all over the house. She considered them a symbol. And I was very impressionable, so I started to love birds as well. Marie told us she'd take care of the birds, so we went back to playing. I never saw it again, and when I asked what happened, she said it just flew away. I was so relieved. Ha, <laughs> yeah, Diane was so proud of packing her own suitcase. Her father came to pick her up that afternoon. She spent the weekend with him and her stepsister. I was a bit jealous, but also happy to have some time with my mother, just us. Do you recognize it? This is the mobile that Marie made me before I was born. It's exquisite and delicate. I loved it. And you did too. I think I still have it in a box somewhere.
The nest was high up in the tree, but the wind blew it down. The bird was obviously young. It was a big fall. It must have been badly hurt. I didn't realize it at the time. Now, I know for certain that someone was in the backyard that night. And since Diane was at her father's, it must have been Marie. What was she doing out there? Maybe... Marie was always quite passionate about birds. So I suggested we keep this one as a pet once it got better. I could already imagine it. A beautiful cage tucked in the corner of the studio. She got so mad. At the time, I didn't understand why she reacted like that. But now... Maybe Marie killed the bird. That's what she was doing out there in the middle of the night, burying it in secret. And it might sound strange, but I also understand why she did it. Marie is really an astonishing person, you know? She's usually hard, but also she could be vulnerable sometimes. She couldn't stand seeing the bird injured. She knew it would never recover. It was too weak. I remember she said, not being able to fly, that's no life for a bird. She thought it would be better off dead. She could have just abandoned it, let things run their course. But I don't think she did. I think she killed it with her own hands. It sounds cruel, doesn't it? <laughs> but that's just Marie. That's her outlook on life. She's all or nothing. Oh, what? what I need to know is what would your mother want? I'm not ducking out. Not this time. After all, isn't this what Marie wanted? I... I think... My legs are shaking. Maybe I'm having another turn. I think I need a sugary drink. Understood. Do you need anything? 
Well, I need more coffee. But if I drink another one, my stomach's going to declare war on the rest of me. I... I just can't speak on my mom's behalf. One thing's for sure, she's a radical. She's all or nothing, all the time. I understand. It's hard to contemplate the idea of living with a disability. It's not that, not at all. If we were talking about me or, or, or someone else, I would say it's gonna be fine. You adapt, people do it all the time. They have to. Life's too important. I would say that. She wouldn't. I'm not sure that answers your question. She certainly comes across as rather f forthright. You don't say. I've seen her on TV a couple of times. My father loves her. She's an extraordinary artist. In her interviews, she's so impressive, fierce even. It must be quite something to be the, the, the daughter of someone so talented. I've heard this one before. That's a polite way to say, it can't be easy to have a nutcase for a mother. Yes, it's quite an experience. <laughs> Doctor, I... Do we know why? Why this happened? We were just having dinner last night, she was... She was fine. She, she... There could be a lot of factors. Family history, hypertension, alcohol consumption. I did have a pretty severe hangover this morning. Even past trauma, like a historic head injury. It's hard to say ah. right now. All right, Miss Demange, I'll give you time to think. Let's speak again in about two hours, if that works for you. Uh, sounds good. Uh, can I see her? Yes, of course. Let me find out her room number. I know what I have to do, what I should do. It wasn't that long ago that I could write this kind of scene without breaking a sweat. I step into the room, there'll be tubes everywhere, beeping sounds. The audience will know that it's serious. Then I start bawling my eyes out. I collapse on my mom's bed, pouring out snot from my nose. Or maybe I'll be dignified, stony-faced, standing quietly in the corner, close up on my face. They'll see I'm suffering deep inside. A single tear rolls down my cheek. That's exactly how it will happen. Or what should happen. There's just one problem. I really must. She probably needs me. I don't know why, but I can't open that door. <laughs> <laughs>